Hello, it's The Ghost. Welcome to A Stranger World Than Fiction, where we are taking a look at what's all going on out there and what others are claiming to be true. As truth finders, we are trying to find answers. Today, come with me to Honduras, and let's see what we can find out, if we don't already know, about the very ancient and hidden Lost City. Okay, from foxnews.com, we have Lost City, Ciudad Blanca, allegedly discovered in Honduras's remote region. Have you guys heard of this? There's a lot of skepticism around it, so let's see what Fox News brings to the table. Known as Central America's Little Amazon, Honduras's Mesquitia region is a vast, lightly inhabited 32,000 square mile region of tropical rainforest, lagoons, mangrove swamps, rivers, remote beaches, and a diverse grouping of flora and fauna, including the deadly jumping viper. Underneath its thick and humid canopy, archaeologists also believe that this region contains the ruins of the famed Ciudad Blanca. Using a form of light detection and ranging equipment known as LIDAR, a group of archaeologists and filmmakers, including Stephen Elkings and Bill Benenson, announced they have possibly discovered the ruins of the centuries-old lost city. In layman's terms, the scientists flew a small plane over the dense stretch of jungle, shooting lasers at the topography to map out the land below the canopy, where they purportedly discovered a network of plazas and pyramids that were hidden for hundreds of years. Some people believe it's a bunch of hooey, really, while others believe that where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, Elkins became captivated by it and decided to wait until technology advanced to produce a better way to find it than walking aimlessly through the jungle. Well, that makes sense. And sure enough, many years later, that opportunity presented itself. The Mystery of Ciudad Blanca, translates in English to the White City, has tempted explorers and treasure hunters as far back as 1526, when Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés sent a letter to the Spanish emperor Charles V after hearing reliable rumors of an area in Honduras that will exceed Mexico in riches, it was said, and equal it in the largeness of its towns and villages. Cortés never found the city, but rumors of its existence persisted, especially after following the mystery of the Maya city in western Honduras. So that happened in 1839, but now here we are with this new city. Another American, Theodore Mord, claimed to have found what he called the lost city of the monkey god. That's another thing you might have seen out there on the internet, stories about that. It was named for the allegation that local indigenous people worshipped huge ape sculptures. That was in 1939. Mord went off of a tip from Charles Lindbergh, who was the first solo aviator to cross the Atlantic, if you didn't know that, and he apparently saw an amazing ancient metropolis when he flew over the jungle. Mode, however, was killed in a car accident before revealing the location of the city he purportedly found, the jungle's remote location, and the dangers that accompany a journey into the heart of darkness, poisonous snakes, disease, oppressive heat, dense foliage, has kept many explorers at bay. It's mountains, says Chris Begley, an archaeologist and expert on Honduras. That's what he told the New Yorker. There's whitewater, there are jumping vipers, coral snakes, stinging plants and biting insects. And then, of course, there are the illnesses, such as malaria, dengue fever. The airplane and the other modern technological advancement have made the search for the lost city a little bit easier. And while a group in 1998 claims to have discovered it using synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, Elkins and Benenson appear to have the best claims to discovering this lost city, La Ciudad Blanca. Christopher Fisher and Stephen Lights of Colorado State University, the project's main archaeologists, claimed that the city was home to a sophisticated Mesoamerican society that had paved streets, parks, pyramids, and an advanced irrigation system that dates back to, ready for it, around 500 A.D. That's a while back. The city's exact location has remained a secret as the Honduran government and archaeologists worry about possible looting and plan to make a full ground expedition this fall. 
And this fall would have been the fall of 2018, guys. It opens the door to a lost world, Fisher says. Archaeology is on the cusp of a technological transformation. It's going to transform our understanding of the Americas. This information on La Ciudad Blanca has inspired people to get into things like documentaries and a series. Even if you haven't heard of this particular find or search for the find, it's out there and there's a lot of interest in it. And as Stephen from CSU, Colorado State University, says, they are looking to pinpoint where human structures are by looking at all the shapes and rectangles that they're finding because, and this is his words, and it's true, nature doesn't really work in straight lines. So if they're finding that, they're finding something. And as per NBC News, archaeologists once thought that these rainforests of Central and South America were just too rugged to allow for anything large or highly organized like communities, like the one that has been described here. But over the past decade or so, researchers have found evidence to argue that the forests were once much more highly managed by the native populations. The idea that the ancient peoples of the Americas created complex cities and roadways in what are now wild forests no longer seems to be such a radical idea as it once did. And that's what's inspired Elkins and his colleagues to go ahead with their research. The square-shaped and rounded structures seen in computerized elevation maps of a rugged rainforest may have been the last vestiges of pyramids, palaces, and even houses in a settlement known as La Ciudad Blanca, or again, like I said, the White City. Tales of Ciudad Blanca have circulated since 1526. I mean, this has been around for a while. Claims about a mysterious province that would exceed Mexico in riches and equal it in the great size of the towns, the multitude of people, and the government thereof. So it has been said. Many explorers have gone in search of this vanished city, driving deep into some of Honduras's roughest and most inaccessible rainforests. Neither riches or runes were found. But nevertheless, the saga inspired documentary filmmakers. And another search, this time using an aerial mapping technology known as light detection and ranging. And it's with this that they're starting to find those straight edges and structures that just have to be something. My question to you guys is, have you heard of this? Have you followed it? Do you know anything about it? And do you know anyone that's actually researching it? This is no different than, say, Oak Island. Oak Island has the fun of finding a treasure, but in all reality, if we find a whole city, who knows what we're going to find in there? You would think this would be hitting the news and TVs everywhere. Maybe it just hasn't really settled in or taken hold yet, but I feel like it's coming. It's probably already here in some form, but I don't think we're hearing the end of this one, not just yet. Call it La Ciudad Blanca or the lost city of the monkey god, but either way, it is said to have some pretty forceful legends still in full force. One being that anyone who ventures into this lost city will be struck down by one of the ancient deities. And just so you know, strangely enough, as allocation.com tells us, the members of the National Geographic Survey Group, so a group that has been out there for years doing very credible things, they camped at a location and all of a sudden were inflicted with a nasty, flesh-eating parasite. What are the chances of that? I mean, basically, this is a disease that once it gets to a person, these skin lesions will develop. And if it goes untreated, this parasite will attack your mouth and your nose. And it's not pretty. But the point is that just about every member of that geographic survey group developed this disease. Of the three sites described about the lost city of the monkey god, only one of them has been explored. So there's still a lot to learn about this region, the indigenous people, and everything that happened there. Still though, information has been uncovered to suggest that the people who inhabited this region built beautiful temples and homes constructed from stone, mahogany, and even woven tapestries. Today, only the stone bases and artifacts remain though, as the wooden cloth have been devoured by the jungle. 
So here we have another mystery on our hands. I don't know if any of you are going to head to Honduras soon, but we have to keep an eye on this one. What have they discovered since these shares came out? And what do they know now? If you've heard about this, if you know anything more about it, please share. Like I said, I think it would be kind of fun to keep an eye on this one. It's not Atlantis. That one always gets all the fame. But what is La Ciudad Blanca? Wouldn't it be interesting if we found a completely organized, semi-advanced society in a place that now, in our reality today, we don't consider advanced at all. In fact, it's sort of an unknown adventure to go into the jungle, isn't it? How crazy would it be if this is where people lived their lives, worked, and produced every single day? You never know what history covers up, so it's always interesting to find. Let me know your thoughts, and thank you for listening. And I will talk to you all soon.